Hello everyone, welcome to match four of the Dungeon Dragons Creature Tournament. Now let's begin with the match's contestants, Ghast versus Ogre. Let's begin. Now, we are doing headfirst match competitions starting from this week and will be scheduled and premiered for later days. So for those who have not subscribed, please do so now to keep tracking of these matches and enjoy. Now I'm, I apologize that it's boring, but that's Dungeon Dragon, so get used to it. Um, so we start first with who goes first based on what I roll. And Ogre goes first, of course. Rolled a 15, so of course Ogre goes first. Um, uh, what else? So, let's start with Ogre. Uh, roll to attack. 17, which obviously hits. Ogre will, uh, will grab its stone-made club. Heavy enough where it will deal... Wow. That's crazy. 2d8 plus a strength modifier. So that would be 6 plus 3, 9 <laughs> plus 4, which will obviously be 13. So, uh, that calculator. So, that's on the gas, right? So, that would be 28 health left for the gas. So for those of you who don't know what a ghast is, of course, the tall, lanky, undead, white creature with a drooping, pink, wormish-like tongue drooping below its body, and pointed ears, and all that. Of the ghast's turn, um, okay, so it has resistant, yeah, what the heck, alright, roll to attack first, 15 hits, <laughs> Um, it'll perform a bite attack, which will be, oh, another D8. Alright, 6 plus 3, which would be 9, performing 9 damage on the ogre with its bite attack. And that'll be, of course, 34. It sinks its enormous teeth into the what appears to be the arm in which the ogre had used with its great club swinging and the ghast attacks striking next, which of course is the first six seconds of the battle. Ogre's turn. You guys probably don't see that. That's a 17. It doesn't matter what I add with the string modifier. That's, that still hits. Um, Ogre will perform a javelin attack, will remove a giant spear-like weapon, and will run a few 20-40 feet away from the ghast, and as it does, it shall throw the javelin a few 30 feet from it. It'll throw and will approximately deal... Let me pull this out. Wow. Uh, three plus four, which would be seven. <laughs> seven piercing damage. <laughs> God. Seven piercing damage on the ghast. Which, of course, will be a 21. The most terrible roll I've made in history. I've rolled a straight up one and two from those dice. Ghast's turn. Um... Yeah, you guys can see that. 11, of course. Um, which, of course, will strike. Um, Ghast will perform a claw attack, which will also be a 2d6 attack, slashing damage. 6 plus 3 would be 9. So I'm assuming that would be... Yeah, I gotta know these. 25 left, and it also says Ogre, sorry, this creature on the run, dead. Fake. 
DC 10 Constitution Saving Throw would be penalized for one minute, which I am keeping track of. So, shoot, I rolled that. Yeah, that, that's a that's a natural two. I didn't do good as planned. Um, <laughs> no, that's interesting. Okay, so ogre is now paralyzed. I'm just gonna write it down. It is now paralyzed under the ghast's claw attack, the slash of blood. Okay, well that makes sense. Uh, now, I'm assuming that 12 seconds have passed, I'm assuming. I'm trying to keep track of it. Ogre's turn again. It is paralyzed, meaning what? Uh, for those of you who do not know, I have the handbook literally right next to my butt. Right here, uh... Paralyzed creature is right here. Oh, that's interesting. Can't move or speak. Huh. Oh, that's, that's pretty bad. Very well. So, in words, Ogre cannot perform another action, so it's the guest's turn again. Which, it'll have to roll for advantage. Oh, my god, that is the worst advantage roll I have ever rolled. What? I rolled a two and a seven. Freak. <laughs> that's a plus three. Yeah, seven plus three, that's a... What is it? Is that a ten? Yeah, I'm afraid that doesn't hit. <laughs> worst ever advantage roll I've ever made. Uh, Ogre is also skipped still because he's still paralyzed. Is there a way that this effect can end? Oh, it can't. Oh, well, I mean, it could... It could... Hold up. Uh... Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay. Okay, uh, Elgar is still far away, not five feet away. Uh, of course, that's why the gas might have missed in the first place. Um, uh, okay, well, I mean, okay, at the end of each of his turns. Okay, well, I mean, the ogre doesn't do much, so like when it paralyzed, it can't do much. I literally rolled a natural 20 for it to escape, so unparalysis, my friend. But, that is, of course, next up would be the guest's turn, which I'm assuming. Okay, so that's uh, 18, which definitely hits. We'll perform another bite attack, and we'll try moving uh, the feet in which the ogre had ran away, means of throwing his javelin, which, of course, the ogre cannot use, because it is lounged deep into the guest's rib cage, slashed through the other side of his back. We'll perform a bite attack. All right, so that's seven plus three, which would be 10. 10 piercing damage. Ogre is now at 15. Ogre no longer has a javelin, but can still use uh, the great club that it is still equipped with. Oh, and it misses. I rolled a natural two on that one. Guest's turn. 10 plus three, which of course would strike. Um, eventually it'll also use, uh, it's not going to use a claw attack. It'll use another bite attack. It'll lash its bite attack against the ogre again, stabbing into him, which, uh, oh, wow. Um, 
12, uh, 12 plus, uh, 3, that equals 15. Oh, never mind then. Ladies and gentlemen, Ogre is now defeated. Hello, hope you enjoyed the match. Next, match 5. Contestants will be Minotaur versus Centaur. Place your votes, everyone. Good luck.